ஹாய் ஐம் டாக்டர் ஸ்ரீதர் கல்யாண சுந்தரம் வெல்கம் அகெயின் டு மை சேனல் ஒன் ஆஃப் தி காமன் டாபிக்ஸ் அட் கன்சர்ன்ஸ் பீடியாட்ரிஷியன்ஸ் அண்ட் பேரண்ட்ஸ் இஸ் பர்சிஸ்டிங் நியோனிட்டல் ஜாண்டிஸ் ஸோ வி ஹாவ் ரிவ்யூட் நியோனிட்டல் ஜாண்டிஸ் இன் டீட்டெயில் இந்த இயர் லெக்சர் ஆன் த சேனல் அஸ் வெல் அஸ் அ ப்ரீஃப் ஓவர் வியூ ஆஃப் நியூ பார்ன் ஜாண்டிஸ் ஸோ வாட் எக்ஸாக்ட்லி இஸ் ப்ரொலாங் ஜாண்டிஸ் வி நோ தேட் த bilirubin surge happens after birth uh, and the liver starts maturing to handle that load so over a period of 7 to 10 days the so called physiologic jaundice fades away in a breastfeeding baby it's not uncommon for the jaundice to continue for a longer period of time so we may see a 2 week or 3 week old breastfed infant still having bilirubins in the range of 8 to 9 mg fairly commonly so we need to be aware of prolonged jaundice and its significance in terms of not missing out on serious underlying problems like liver disease or infections the frequency of problems happening when jaundice is prolonged beyond 2 weeks is around 0.5% maximum 1% depending on the high risk group it's more common in premature babies so we allow up to 3 weeks in preterm babies and if you have a term baby where you have done a direct bilirubin as part of the jaundice workup in the first week even in a term baby you can wait up to 3 weeks or so to see if the jaundice is improving because you already know the most important component that you are looking for is a direct bilirubin in these cases and the direct bilirubin is normal so you don't need to be uh, too anxious that we will miss something the color of the stool is very important in follow up of these patients as well but unfortunately pale stools is a late manifestation of liver disease cholestasis in particular and uh, obviously not seeing the pale stool uh, or seeing colored stool does not rule out underlying uh, liver concerns so the way i approach such babies is uh, firstly there is a group of babies where the jaundice continues beyond the certain period of time at a high level for example we may have treated with phototherapy and discharged the patient there is no risk factor for hemolysis and then the baby comes for follow up and again the jaundice rises to uh, close to the treatment threshold for example 19 or 20 mg at 7 uh, days of age so it's not very high but at the same time it rises back and this has happened a couple of times uh, for a few babies where they get admitted twice and still it comes back when you stop so it's only in this group of babies that we consider breast milk uh, related jaundice and uh, we consider uh, partly holding feeds so in majority of the cases of neonatal jaundice even if they need phototherapy there is absolutely no need to disturb breast feeding so breast milk may have a factor the beta glucuronidase enzyme which may uh, release the bilirubin which is bound in the gut and this may get reabsorbed into the blood stream so this kind of recycling mechanism increases the prolonged jaundice but at the same time bilirubin is an antioxidant it is not harmful by itself unless it reaches a very high threshold the free bilirubin which is circulating in the blood when it reaches a level that can cross the blood brain barrier that is when we get bilirubin neurotoxicity in a stable baby who is a few days old most of the bilirubin is bound to the albumin so the free bilirubin is not high even if the level is high and uh, it's mainly in the hemolytic cases or in complications like infection that we need to be worried about kernic stress because the rate of rise of bilirubin is so high and the heme breakdown products the blood breakdown products can bind to the albumin competing with the bilirubin binding so you have more free bilirubin which can cross the blood brain barrier and that is the reason we are more aggressive with the treatment thresholds when it comes to uh, hemolytic jaundice in a non hemolytic jaundice in a well baby your treatment thresholds increase as you would have seen from the american academy charts as the baby gets older the treatment thresholds are more relaxed even we were training about 20 years ago we used to do uh, exchange transfusions at 20 mg but now we consider starting phototherapy in these babies at 19 to 20 mg so a big change has happened in the approach to non hemolytic jaundice once you are sure that you are not dealing with the hemolytic cause breastfeeding is important for the baby for multiple reasons you can review my uh, playlist on breastfeeding to know the benefits of breast milk and why we should do all we can to support minor reasons like persisting jaundice should not cause you to go off it's only when you keep reaching a threshold for treatment you consider stopping it so 
couple of times you have st started phototherapy for such babies you don't want to admit them a third time you can consider holding the breastfeeds for a couple of days give formula milk at the same time you have to reinforce to the mother that they have to express milk and they have to uh, store it they should be ready to go back to full breastfeeding and because they will be going to full breastfeeding again encourage the use of syringe or cup rather than bottle feeds uh, when they give the formula and uh, this is only for two to three day period when bilirubin starts dropping you can go to half breastfeeds for three four days and then full breastfeeds again once you know the bilirubin is not rising again most of the cases where we have tried this it works for three to four days and then it rises a little bit but it doesn't come back to the previous level so a level of 12 to 14 milligrams persisting at one month is not uncommon so the two main investigations you need in these babies is a liver function test mainly looking at the direct bilirubin and the gamma gt and the urinary tract infection has to be ruled out of course you need to make sure that you have the newborn screening result for these babies for the thyroid keep in mind that the newborn screening most of the time includes only the tsh so you don't have the uh, free t4 and a central cause like hypopituitarism will be missed out in these cases if there is conjugated jaundice which is persisting in a baby who has uh, micropenis for example you should start thinking of hypopituitarism as a reason so examine the baby thoroughly look for midline defects all these can point to uh, hypopituitarism as well uh, hypothyroidism can lead to more prolonged uh, unconjugated jaundice but some conjugated fraction may go up as well uh, metabolic factors that produce it like galactosemia should, should not be missed but this again will be picked up in the newborn screen in most of the centers g6pd deficiency if they have been exposed to any factor that increases the hemolysis rate or even without hemolysis g6pd deficiency can cause a persisting high jaundice so newborn screening may include that in some countries if you don't have it as part of it you may consider repeating it it causes more an acute surge than a prolonged jaundice as such so the liver enzymes are added usually and if they are abnormal it may indicate a neonatal hepatitis kind of picture but uh, very uncommon to see that when you look at follow-up of these babies what happens if the direct bilirubin is high obviously you need further evaluation uh, you need to consider referring to a pediatric gastroenterology center biliary atresia is obviously the main concern and as we know the threshold for biliary atresia diagnosis should be high you cannot miss the diagnosis you cannot delay the diagnosis because the earlier you treat definitely the better the outcome and uh, the investigations that we do for biliary atresia the ultrasound of the abdomen to see if the gallbladder is visualized whether there is a triple cord sign and so on um, HEDA scan is controversial nowadays because people don't advise doing it if the stool color is pale the HEDA scan will show obstruction if the stool color is normal the HEDA scan may not be conclusive a liver biopsy can be considered or a uh, ERCP can be considered if possible but if there is a definite clinical suspicion uh, the jaundice need not be increasing you may see a transient decrease as well the liver enzymes may not be abnormal but if the baby has pale stools and the ultrasound does not show colidocal cyst or obstruction or any similar sort and the gallbladder is small your index of suspicion is high so you will have to refer to a surgical gastroenterologist and an exploratory laparotomy may need to be considered Biliary atresia is a very serious diagnosis, uh, so of course we should be very cautious not to miss it. So uh, this is in nutshell about what we do. So the principal investigations, you have already done the hemoglobin earlier probably for the jaundice persisting. So full blood count peripheral smear to consider hemolytic sources of prolonged jaundice. Uh, G6PD enzyme testing may be done if you are, don't have it as part of the newborn screen. The thyroid study should be done if you have not done it as part of the newborn screen or you have to, a reason to suspect uh, hypopituitarism as a factor. Uh, you have to consider the urine uh, routine and culture if the baby is failing to thrive or there are other features like irritability, reflux and so on where you might consider infection. Fever is very unusual in a newborn with UTI who is presenting with prolonged jaundice. I have seen a few babies with prolonged jaundice who had urinary tract infection. I don't do the urine testing routinely but if the uh, jaundice persists beyond 3-4 weeks and the liver function is normal and it stays at a high level. I mean if the bilirubin is around 8-9 to nine milligrams I don't worry but if it is like 12-13 milligram at one month I generally do a urine test as well. For those of you who are familiar with micromoles, it's 17.1 times uh, or divided by 17.1 of the micromole unit to get the milligrams percent that I've been talking about. So uh, I hope uh, this is useful and do share and uh, subscribe to my channel. 
uh, and I will be sharing more videos like this. Thank you.